Well, hello there. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. As you heard, my name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, and today I'm excited to be bringing you yet another car review. I have a beautiful 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQE 500 all-electric sedan, and I'm apologizing because I'm competing with our local airport, and today's Saturday, and it's a beautiful, hot, really hot, humid, sunny day here in Caledon, and they always do a lot of their... Uh, flight instructions on Saturdays and they do a lot of these loops and they tend to fly close to where I'm filming. So I'm going to talk right through it and hopefully you'll be able to hear me okay. So again, thanks very much for tuning in. I also want to always thank the OEMs when I get these vehicles and this time it's Mercedes-Benz Canada. Thank you very much for allowing me the use of this lovely press vehicle for a few days as I've been driving it around the GTA for work and for doing other things. So sit back, relax. Let me tell you a little bit about this car and let me know and I'll tell you my thoughts all about it and whether you, it should be something you should look at. So let's get going. All right, so the EQE 500 is the fourth in the stable of the EQ branded products available here in Canada and in North America. Of course, they started off with the EQS sedan and then the EQS SUV, just a bigger version of that. And then the EQB, uh, which is their, uh, looks like their GL based uh, platform that they've electrified very, very well. And I did a car review on that. So again, I'm gonna apologize for the noise here. So getting back to the EQE 500, it's their E-Class equivalent of an all-electric vehicle. That's where they're sitting this vehicle into that realm. And of course, when I talk about pricing, you'll realize why. But it is, again, luxurious. You know, there's, there's nothing unluxurious about Mercedes-Benz, as you know. And this enters, of course, the Canadian and North American markets all new, right? It's built on their all new electrified platform that they've been building their EQ series on. It's a sporty sedan. You know, I like to see more four-door sedan products. I'd love to see even some four-door hatchbacks starting to come out, some smaller products. Yes, I keep pushing on people and on the, on the OEMs to get into that mass market role and start cranking out more affordability, but we're getting there. And, you know, Mercedes is certainly doing what they can for their customer base, who they know very well, and trying to get them into electrification as they slowly expand the reach of their company and their, their goals for going EV in the future. Um, so this is really a nice vehicle. It packs a lot of the same features as the EQS family um, with the M bucks and stuff like that. So I'll show you the interiors and, and a lot of um, the elements, but in a much more compact factor form. And as you can see by this vehicle, it looks really nice. So the, uh, this is uh, officially the EQE 500 4Matic sedan. I don't know why they always add these 4Matics, I guess because it's automatic four wheel drive most likely, um, and it does, of course, handle well with the all-wheel drive and that extra weight. Uh, so let me talk about the design. Oh, it's a warm out here, folks, so I'm gonna have to keep going and trudging through this. So as you can see by the design in this, this is I'm sleek, slim, not like me, and but sporty. Sleek, slim, and sporty, and that's certainly what it is. It's got a really nice uh, lines to it, both from the front, from the rear, from the side, from the quarters, really nice viewpoints. Um, they've added, you know, good features that they've carried over from the other EQs. Slimline LED, high performance headlights, uh, low front end, great for aerodynamics. I don't know what the drag coefficient on this is, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's not, if it's in the 0 0.23, 0 0.24 range, somewhere there, it's gonna be pretty low because this is nicely sculptured. Um, it's got that, of course, new vehicle architecture that I mentioned that the Mercedes is using to give it the shorter overhangs on the front and on the, the back so you get a lot more interior space and that's again something I talk about folks with all electrics having that platform built up you get a ton more interior space than you would on a normal internal combustion vehicle and it definitely shows in, in all those vehicles um, you've got some different elements and I'm not going to read from the pamphlet here just that it looks really nice this is boasting 19 inch uh, AMG five-spoke uh, aero wheels, I believe, on this one. So it's unique for this particular EQS 500 package. Um, they look really nice. Um, they ride really nice too. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll talk about riding when I'm in doing my driving summary, but this, this is a really nice, comfortable ride. And it should be, you would expect it for a Mercedes at this price point. Now again, wrapping up on the design, this is built on a 5,000, just under 5,000 millimeter long wheelbase. So it's a pretty good length car. I believe it's slightly longer than the Model 3 because I know when I park it in my garage, I got to go a little bit more in so I can close the door than I can on my Model 3. 
it's, uh, it supports a 3120 millimeter wheel, wheelbase. And again, you can see the wheels have been pushed out to the corners, to the ends, to allow you a nice long wheelbase for that really comfortable ride and handling characteristics that, of course, all electric give you, plus a lot more interior room. So I think they've done a great job in the design elements for this. Now, if we talk about some of the spec numbers on here, uh, this uh, performs quite well. It's got your different driving modes, of course. You guys know I usually like to drive in eco mode and try to just do normal driving and see what kind of range I can get and how the, how it cars uh, it drives from a drivability axis. But this, again, mentioned that I mentioned earlier, does feature an all-wheel drive system. It has a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, but usable is just over 90, 90.6 kilowatt hours that are usable. Um, so this provides the driver what they're mentioning as a range of 418, but then I've seen other documents that EPA at 485. So I would say that your EPA rated range is between 418 and 485 kilometers, somewhere in there as a good starting benchmark for range when you're at 100%. It's a pretty big pack. Um, and you know you should be able to get pretty good range out of this. I will let you know what I found my range results coming up a little bit near the end. EPA is stated at 18.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Um, that's I'm just seeing a little bit better than that right now, so that's not bad, but that seems to be the benchmark. Now, Mercedes is not striving for efficiency here. They're striving for decent efficiency because they want you to have good range and take these on long road trips, which you certainly can. Um, and the other reason you can, you can have faith in the range and the availability that uh, this vehicle will provide you is because it does support it with DC fast charging, which I'll tell you in, in a couple of secs. One other thing I like though, is that Mercedes has done really well, is the rear axle steering. Now a lot of manufacturers don't do that. So you start putting together some longer vehicles, some longer wheelbase vehicles, uh, you want to be able to handle them handle quite well and turn and park. So the rear supports 4.5 degree rear axle steering. And I know on some of the, the EQS products, it can be 9%, 9 or 10%. So this is about half. And it doesn't sound like a lot, that little bit of a turn, but it actually equates to really good handling. And, and especially at speeds, it uh, thing moves quite well and handles very well. So I'm glad that uh, Mercedes has done that uh, for this product too. So I mentioned about the battery and uh, the specs there. Uh, the charging is always important, right, for road tripping. So uh, I open this up and I'll give you a zoom in on this, but it's your standard CCS combo. Uh, who knows if <laughs> Mercedes will go to NACS at some point as of the filming today. They haven't announced that, but, but who knows? Maybe by the time I put this episode out in a few days, they'll announce that they're gonna go future products with North American charging standard. Who knows? But for now, it's CCS. And I don't see CCS going away anytime soon. So back to charging, uh, this does provide uh, 9.6 of AC fast charging at home. You put it in a level two and it can accept up to 9.6 kilowatts. Now it does support DC fast charging of up to 170 kilowatts. And I think that that's a pretty good number. Uh, so what that means, again, as I try to relate this to you as a consumer who are thinking about EVs, what is that road tripping experience? You know, how long am I gonna have to stop? And today, folks, the average is 20 to 30 minutes. And it may sound like a lot, but trust me, when you're on the road after two and a half to three and a half to four hours of driving, you pull off the road, you want to stop, you need to stop. You can't handle the truth about stopping. Sorry, I, I digress there. But you just have to have to stop and uh, for merit, various reasons and 20 to 30 minutes is not long at all. It will fly by. So. I think for road tripping, that is where we're at now with these uh, newer vehicles and the charging standards and the speeds that they're coming out with and the ability for more and more charging stations to support those speeds as we're seeing all the major charging uh, EVSE providers and uh, charging um, uh, providers push out their higher volume, higher powered units, especially across North America. We're seeing more and more of that. So continue to have faith and confidence in that. If I had to all right, before I show you the interior and forget, I just want to make sure I give you the rest of the performance numbers. Horsepower on this rated at 402 horsepower, 633 pound-feet of torque to get you going. Um, zero to 100, it's saying in 4.7 seconds. I can attest I put this in sport mode for a second, just sloshed on the accelerator and it went like a bat out of hell and it seemed like it was four and a half seconds or so. So I'll take that 4.7 numbers. Top speed, 210 kilometers per hour here in North America and in Europe. Uh, so some good performance specs. Now let's take a quick look at the interior. 
I'm not going to spend a lot of time in the interior because it's luxurious and it's very nice, as you would expect an MB product to have. It's got that similar look to the uh, the Big Brothers on the EQS uh, line, or the EQS, the sedan, and the SUV, but just a little bit smaller. It doesn't have the three displays like you get across on the other models, but it, it really is a, a nicely designed interior. It's very comfortable, has that sporty touch, uh, lots of USB and charging apparatus around here, nice illumination. It's got a big glove box as well. Um, and even USB ports and stuff in the back and standard leather upholstery is in the 500 formatic option. The screens are nice too. You've got your 12.3 on the binnacle for the digital ins instrumentation cluster and 12.8 for your infotainment and all your other options. Very nice screens. I did find some glare because of the angles um, so I would certainly suggest some sort of matte protector to keep the glare down. Uh, but otherwise, everything's really nice. Uh, these do feature over-the-air updates as well, so the infotainment and the uh, uh, options will just get better with time. And it is based on a second-generation MBUX design. It's got uh, a voice assistant that's pretty cool. You can speak some plain language to it, and it will provide some features uh, and functionality because of that, not just nav and stuff like that. So all in all, a very comfortable and very nice environment for people to spend some time as you're driving around. Okay, I always like to see how it is to get into the back seat, so let me try this one here. So, with the door almost 90 degrees out, I like that. Big, thick doors. A little bit of a tighter kind of getting in here, because again, you've got this low sloping roof line, so some of you are going to have to be conscious for. I'm about 5'7", so just, just able to slide my head under without bonking. That's pretty good. Tons of leg room here. I have the seat position for where I have it, and there's still almost two-fifths of room, so if you're over six feet, you'll find a nice driving position. I have the seat high because I like to sit high. A lot, a lot of taller people like to sit lower in the vehicle. Very comfortable with the armrest, flat floor. I like that. Actually, almost flat floor. It's got just ever a slight hump on this. Um, otherwise, yeah, very comfortable interior. Nice uh, uh, use of materials here. You have a hard mat pocket, uh, door pockets. Uh, everything's accessible. Good job. All right, if we're looking at cargo space here on the EQE 500, okay, to pop the trunk, either with the key fob or whatever, it opens up. You've got a pretty decent cargo spot. Um, it's rated at 400 liters with the second row up, as you see. Put that second row down and um, it's at 895 liters. Now, an easy way to put the, one thing about the second row is you don't have to get in there to pull some buttons out. You have a couple buttons here, left and a right up here. Push the left, left pops down. Push the right, and the right pops down. Do you have to go in, I believe? Let me try this. Yeah, no, it doesn't open it up. It's just a one-way, kind of like what Tesla's done as well, and a lot of others. So at least you have that. Slide stuff in. It's got a pretty good amount of space on it. And uh, as you're seeing the B-roll of it, uh, it's a pretty, pretty good, not class-leading, but acceptable. Now, one thing I did want to show you is this is what the charging cord comes in. This has to be the best charging cord case I have ever seen any OEM provide with their vehicle. It's a small suitcase with strap handles and everything. It's actually really good. Uh, you can actually put more stuff in here than just the charging cord, I may add, because it's not that big, the mobile charger. So as you can see here, this is the mobile charger. You've got your standard three prong. I don't think there's any adapters with this. Nope, so this is a standard 110, 120 volt. There might be an adapter kit you can get because this is not a pigtail, so this is uh, permanently affixed to it. It's a Delphi brand uh, mobile charger uh, with your J1772 end on it. So, um, hey, and you can actually pack this a little nicer and put a few things in here. Put some manuals, whatever. Put some adapters if you got some, if you needed something for, for whatever, and utilize this. So that's pretty good. Um, or not utilize this case and keep this case for something else because it fits in there quite nice. Now, one thing I can't show you is any sort of frunk or what the electronics and the front uh, engine bay would look like because in typical EQ fashion, especially for this S and S uh, sedan SUV and, the, and this vehicle, you cannot open the front hood. Mercedes doesn't give you a lever or any way to open that. You can find out how, I'm sure, but they don't want you opening this up, basically nothing there to see. You would just take it in for any servicing, air, you know, HEPA filter changes, that kind of stuff to your local dealership. So you ask, again, how would I put in windshield washer fluid? That's, that's basically all we do for EVs, right? Well, as in the EQS uh, S series, Mercedes has figured that out. They give you this side access port. Simply just push that in. It pops out, and there's this tray here. 
that you just pour your liquid in and it feeds it into there and it will come up to the surface when you're full. Probably put half a jug or three quarters of a jug in down this thing. And that's all you would do every once in a bit. Fill up your windshield washer fluid, close it up, and away you go. And before we get into driving, I did want to make sure I mentioned that this also has an app as most all electrics and most vehicles nowadays are coming with OEM apps to support different kinds of features like Find Me, Remote Starts, this kind of stuff. This has it as well. It's called Digital Extras. And you can do all kinds of things from your charge settings to your pre-entry climate controls, all the standard kind of fare that we're used to now for apps for EVs. So I encourage you to go online and check out more information about that if that's of interest. Uh, supports uh, both uh, Android and Apple phones. All right, so with all that info out of the way, let's go for a quick drive. All right, so let me give you some of my thoughts in driving this uh, beautiful vehicle from Mercedes-Benz here, a QE500. Uh, sorry for the fan noise, I'm just trying to cool the car down because it's uh, really, really warm today, uh, humid, and uh, I've just been sweating standing outside for two hours trying to film the rest of this episode, as you're seeing here. So let me go for my just my quick drive up the road here. Um, I've been driving this around now for several days, um, almost 200 kilometers over days. I did a nice run across to the east end of Toronto and back uh, one, earlier this week on a highway. And, and you know, as to be expected, this is a very smooth and capable um, vehicle. Um, you know, it's a Mercedes-Benz product. It's very luxurious and very comfortable. I find with the seat, I have to for me, I like to put it kind of high. I'm fairly close to the top here. But the reason is that I just have this tendency I'm trying to see over. And because it's such a sharp raking front hood, I can't really see the front of it because it's raking down. So I'm just used to setting seats up a little higher so that I can kind of sit up and, and over rather than low and try to peek up. So because of that, because of potentially my, my unique ergonomics, I got to put the steering wheel down, otherwise my hands are way up here into the into the glass of the vehicle, and um, which means that if I put the steering wheel down a bit, I've, I'm blocking some of the top part of this driver's binnacle display, which isn't a big deal um, because uh, I can see all the the key information there. I can hear the turn signal uh, when I'm on when I'm turning, so don't necessarily need to see that. But again, something that you're going to need to physically sit in this vehicle get a sense of comfort from the seat and from the height and orientation. Uh, obviously seating position, mirrors, all that kind of stuff are set with your memory seat settings here. So that's pretty good. Um, I like that. It does have car wash mode. It's got a lot of features at EVs to uh, help um, make it a little easier on them. Uh, the cup holders work really well. I've been using them. I, I like, again, that they're in this position here in the middle and really nice and easy to get to a cup of coffee or, or a drink when you need to. Um, so the suspension now, so the suspension is not air suspension and if there's a, you're hearing a little clanging noise, that's just my filming sign in the back seat here bumping away. This is an extremely quiet car, a very smooth car. As you can hear I'm, I'm doing almost 70 kilometers an hour and there's hardly any noise in the car at all. Uh, only from the tires, from the little bit thicker tires that they, that they have here. Um, the suspension works wonderfully well. It is an electronic dampening system, uh, coilover system and, and shocks and springs in the rear. So uh, when you set those driving modes, you can go in there and, and set some of the uh, suspension settings as well as sporty, comfort, uh, regular, or something along those lines. Three different settings, and it will look electronically dampen those and stiffen them up and soften them up uh, to your liking based on those, those settings that you do. So it, it's worth the time to go in there and play with them. I set everything to comfort as I get older now. I like to have things more comfortable. Than, than sporty. If I want to be sitting in a race car, then I, I will. Otherwise, if I'm driving and taking my family out and about, I don't want to be rocked about like there's uh, there's no tomorrow in, in potholes and, and going over bumps. So this absorbs the bumps very nicely. This road has a few bumps in it, as you can hear and tell, and it's taking it quite nicely. Um, let me, uh, after I finish talking here, I'll show you a quick video about the um, adaptive cruise and the lane keeping, how that works. It works really well too. I enjoyed use, utilizing that, but just a very pleasant experience, nice steering wheel to grip. Everything is within close proximity of uh, functions and features. Um, I do wish that the climate controls were, were there's some buttons, not just all soft touch, but that's me. And that's coming from somebody that owns a Model 3, that everything is soft touch. I do still like if I had the option to have hard, uh, some hard touch controls in there. Tesla is making things a little easier with some shortcuts in the scroll wheel, so I'm getting used to that. But um, I, I do I do like some familiar, some hard touch buttons. Anyway, they've done a great job. This is a fantastic uh, vehicle. Uh, again, with that rear steering, moves really, really nice. Turns on a dime. 
And, uh, you know, as I turn around here, just to wrap up this segment, you know, I could take this very long car, as I said, and just over three meters in length, and I could turn it around in here quite easily with tons of room to spare and get myself going again. So well done, Mercedes. This is an absolute joy to drive, and people are going to like it, um, especially if you already like the brand. All right, so just quickly showing you the... Uh highway driving assist features of the Mercedes EQE 500 sedan here. Um, very similar to the EQS, EQS SUV as you've seen before. Uh, very same instrumentation, same type of displays and uh, features and warnings and that kind of stuff. So I have it set for 105. Got the adaptive cruise and the lane keeping on and uh, the driving assist. So you got the green steering wheel now. So let me just uh, nudge the wheel. So it happens about every 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds or so. I guess it depends on speeds. Let's see how it navigates this lane, if it stays in lane. Yeah, it does. Sometimes these features will, will kind of go back and forth looking to think about what lane you're trying to, you know, if you're trying to stay in this lane or exit on the, uh, the other one. So they're getting much better, much more refined in keeping the lanes as well. So this is uh, going through this nice gradual turn here on the highway with no problems at all, keeping it nice and centered, not really ping-ponging or anything like that. Uh, again, it's just asking me to just nudge the wheel. I've got the distance set for just a couple of vehicles, so it doesn't have to slow down, and uh, that guy sped up and got in nicely. So it's a really smooth system. It's one thing I like about the um, Mercedes is um, is that it is smooth. It doesn't have this aggressive acceleration or this aggressive deceleration like some of the other adaptive cruise control systems have, where they want to get you up to speed as fast as possible and then kind of almost wait to the last minute to slow you down. So this does a pretty good job. Um, so I do like that. It's a nice smooth system and very quiet, of course, in this vehicle and comfortable. So again, well done, Mercedes. This will definitely take the stress out of long driving for you with the uh, driving assist and uh, it's a feature that works really well. Okay, I also add that this does have a active lane changing assist feature with the vehicle as well. Um, so similar to some vehicles that we're starting to see with uh, what they call more uh, level two type of driving assist modes. So I've got a clear lane on here on the left. I'll do a lane change. So I just put the signal on and then the vehicle is going to ask me to grab the wheel. Let's see if it changes the lanes here. Nope. Not going to. Let me try that again here. So I'm going to grab the, make sure I grab the wheel and then put the turn signal and then you see change to the left show up. It changes to the lane and then the signal stops. So all I did is uh, put the signal on to where you're doing a lane change. So not all the way down with this, but just the uh, the normal tap down. And then it will automate that lane change function check for, for a blind spot being clear that there's room and it will uh, change the lane. So it did it really nicely and pretty smoothly there, which was nice. So uh, again, good job on Mercedes-Benz for incorporating a nice smooth system to the overall uh, environment. Just wanted to quickly show the driving assist screen so you can change the screens here on this uh, to different different viewpoints. So I've got the assistant screen here, uh, moved from the classic, and it just gives you a Tesla-like, um, you know, full self-driving beta, beta view or full self-driving view where you see the vehicles in front of you with the lanes and it has, of course, the icon showing what's engaged. It's a pretty good system. It also has the blind spots uh, showing in the on that uh, icon there. And of course, things light up on the mirrors and uh, it will uh, show you vehicles as they approach. So it's a pretty cool system. And I like that um, most of the OEMs are now moving this way to give you some sort of digital representation of the, the landscape in front of you and uh, near you. Here's what it sounds. Let's talk about price points on these now. So it's a really, really fine vehicle, but of course not going to be cheap. This one has a lot of options. This is the Alpine Gray, as you can see, a beautiful color. Hard to kind of stand out today in this murky, cloudy, smoky day that we've got going on here in the GTA. But it has a bunch of options. Base price on the EQE 500s are $95,000 Canadian. With all the options that are added this uh, that are on here, that bumped it up to $120,505, plus, of course, your freight PDI and taxes and all that other stuff. So it gets quite up there for a very capable uh, but uh, and loaded luxury vehicle. Just want to summarize my driving history on this for the week. Um, I really only charged it once. I didn't really have to charge it again. As you can see, I started off at 100% state of charge at 517 kilometers. And I drove it 355 kilometers uh, in four or five days. 
and it projected that I would have 300, uh, sorry, uh, it ended at a range of 158, which means that it projected 358 kilometers and I drove 355. So it's pretty accurate as far as the range estimates go. As you can see, my efficiency was at 18.3 kilowatt hours per 100, which is pretty good for a car of this size and weight. Um, I drove it primarily eco mode. We had some warm temperatures, so some AC use, mixed driving, but 40 highway city, 40% uh, highway city and 60% city is what I'm trying to say. So all in all, I think it was a very uh, capable and the efficiency that I got is, is pretty well bang on to the EPA estimates as well. And as you can see, when I charged it afterwards, the full charge before returning it, um, it start, had a estimated uh, range of 565 kilometers. So obviously um, the BMS learned my driving habits and recalibrated itself because when you drive normally and just stop and go traffic and whatever, don't not jackrabbit starts and racing, you can really stretch the range. And this shows that I could have most likely gone easily into the high 400 kilometers, probably into 500 kilometers, just in, in mainly city driving quite easily. All right, so in conclusion, what do I think about the Mercedes-Benz EQE 500? Well, of course, it's gonna get a big thumbs up from me and a recommendation because A, it's all electric, which I love, and B, Mercedes continues to electrify more and more of their product lines. And I love, love to see that as they're trying to diversify their mix and also get some of their uh, existing legacy ICE customers in and attracted into their EVs. And I think they're doing a good job. They're building vehicles that their customers like, and this is no exception. Obviously, it's an expensive car. It's not going to be for everyone. It's a very capable car. Um, so in closing, Mercedes-Benz has, you know, continues to uh, excel at their electrification strategy. Sure, they don't have tons of products out there, dozens of models, but where they are focusing their efforts and times on are building very capable EVs that will have good range, good fast charging, and, and all the comforts that you expect out of an MB3 point star, three pointed star product and even more because you get quiet, you get better handling, you get zero emissions, right folks? That's the number one, no emissions. And as you drive this vehicle over the lifetime, you will save hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds into the tons of CO2s that you will not be admitting into the, uh, admitting into the atmosphere because you're driving an all electric ZEV product. Remember that, that's a key point. A lot, of our, a lot of these car reviewers don't talk about that. And to me, that's one of the most important facets of going all electric is for that reason. You'll save money on fuel because this thing's gonna be cheap. You'll get 400 kilometers, probably for about five or six bucks of charging on this in the summertime. It's that cheap, folks. Remember that. So when you are looking for an EV and you want a Mercedes, you want a sedan, EQE 500 is a fantastic product. There's a couple of flavors with this. I think there's a downshifted model, so you can look at the websites in North America. I'm talking Canadian here when I talk about numbers, but you can check out your regional sites and see what's available there. I would encourage you to go to your Mercedes-Benz dealer and test one out, see their products. But hey, continue up the good work, Mercedes-Benz. I know they're, they're announcing battery plants and announcing all the kinds of different alignments going on, so they continue to move forward. So well done job, and again, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Mercedes-Benz Canada for allowing me the use of this press vehicle for a few days, and I really thank them very much for considering me and allowing me these vehicles when they do. So, hey, that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a few things about this terrific all-electric uh, EV sedan product, and I encourage you to check them out. And thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed and all that stuff, check out all the stuff coming up at the end of the show here after I'm done talking. Uh, with ways that you can uh, hook, look me up, you can subscribe. There's a Patreon link as well. And I always thank my Patreon supporters on the end credits. You know who you are. Thank you very much. I'm always very humbled. And until the next episode of the EV Revolution Show, where I'll have, I'm still getting a few more cars this month uh, to review. So I'll have some back-to-back -back review episodes coming up now. Everybody stay safe. Have a good summer. And I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.